Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a day like this. We thank, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the light. We thank you for the, for the midnight. We thank you, Lord, for everything we go through in life. Because we know all things work together for good. For those who are called by the Lord, those who are called according to your purpose, we pray that, Lord, today it will be a time, a day, a period of praising the Lord all the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we're committing ourselves to you. There will be no complaints today. There will be no conflict today. And there will no combat with anybody today in Jesus' name. We pray that the love of God will bring the joy of the Lord to the very surface of the heart of everyone in Jesus' name. And as we rejoice before you, as we praise your name, as we glorify you, great, mighty, marvelous things will be taking place in Jesus' name. Put your praise in every heart. The glory of the Lord will fall and the power of the Lord will be known. And Lord, we pray no situation will remain the same in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before you see that, everybody give me another amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at something very peculiar today. You know, many people, when they read their Bibles, they never are able to get anything, anything new. Anything special, anything peculiar from the word of God. That's the reason, by the way, why many people, they read the Bible every day. They study the Bible every week and they listen to messages and preaching almost every time. And yet, their lives never change. The situations remain the same because they never change anything, whatever they read. But today, we're going to change a lot of things. I said we're going to change a lot of things. The situation in your life, the peculiarity in your life, the perplexity in your life, how does everything turn around? How do you know that today you are starting, it's like there's sorrow, you want to move to joy. There's sickness, you want to move to health. There's bondage, you want to move to deliverance. There's imprisonment, you want to move to dominion. How do you make that transition in your life? You know, the thing people know is that we've turned Christianity in this continent of Africa. We've turned Christianity into a region of pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And I think it's, you know, as I look at the church, I'm not just talking about this church, deeper life. I'm talking about the church at large. Uh, you know, a lot of things that the people of the world who do not read their Bibles, what they are brought in. I say a lot of things that the people are brought in into the church. And then the things that are there, especially in the Acts of the Apostles, which is the story of the church. The story of the church on the move. The story of the church triumphant. A lot of things there, many people do not understand. And I want to bring to attention of those things. I'm sure you've read this before. I'm sure you've learned this before. I'm sure you, you've had messages on this before. But as I read this, what do I see? Let's come to Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20. It says, and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the first thing I notice here is that they brought Paul and Silas before the magistrates. And the one reason they gave is this Paul and Silas, they're teaching something different, something strange, something not according to their custom, something not according to their law. And they said, in particular, because we are Romans. Well, when you have the word of the word Romans, I want you to look at verse 36. In verse 36, and the keeper of the prison told this. 
saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. Have you ever read where somebody was put in prison unlawfully? And then the magistrates thinking through, they said, okay, let those people go. If you were, what will you do? You run out immediately. You say, praise the Lord. And Paul was not in a hurry to run out of the prison. Did you ever think about that? Imprisonment is not a good thing. Restriction is not a good thing. I mean, hell, the stocks, overnight, it's not a good thing. Now you can go. Look at what Paul said in verse 37. But Paul said unto them, they are beating us openly, uncondemned. Being Romans, being Romans. I'm saying, Paul, what did you tell them when they said they were Romans? What did you tell them? Hey, big deal. I'm a Roman too. I was born there. I have the same citizenship as you. And then you would have been free. No, he said. We don't tell them what God does not allow us to tell them. But no, if you are told them you are Roman, they would not have done that to you. He said, it doesn't matter. God has a purpose for taking me into that prison. And now that the purpose has been fulfilled, I can now tell them I am a Roman Jew. And then they have cast us into the prison. And now do they thrust us out privately, privately? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. Verse 38. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they, both Silas and Paul, were Romans. We learned something there that you're not too quick to get out of trouble and give all the reasons why this should not be happening to you. Because if you allow everything going on to happen, you'll find a miracle you wouldn't have discovered if you didn't go into the prison. The situation happening to you today, if it didn't happen, you'll not see some miracles. And the predicament you're going through, and the restriction you're going through, and the bad, bad things you think are happening. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? If those things did not happen, you'll not have the record of Acts chapter 16. You'll not have the miracle that, are, that is recorded here. We learn a lesson. Don't jump out. Don't hurry up. And then run away from that situation. Let what is happening happen. And say, Lord, you must have something to print out of this. To bring out of this condition. I'm coming back to verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stalks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas did what? Tell me out loud. Prayed and then did what? Are you there? And did what? And sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. You know what? I know some people, they only sing in church. They don't sing at home. I know some people, they only sing in good times. They don't sing in bad times. I know some people, they only sing in, at noon. When the sun is shining. When everything is bright. When there's prosperity. They don't sing in the midnight. When there is adversity. 
when there is persecution, when there is opposition, ability and courage and power for your hour has come upon your life today in Jesus' name. Prevailing power of prayer and praise. Prevailing power of prayer and praise. Prayer is a mighty force, a great force. But not prayer with panic, not prayer with perplexion, perplexity, not prayer with fear, not prayer with doubt, not prayer with, I don't know what's going to happen, not prayer with watching the faces of people, not prayer with opening your eyes and closing your eyes and looking at the time. I mean prayer, prayer that is released from a free heart. And prayer that comes out is pouring out of the earth. No prayer with complaint. No prayer with criticism. No prayer with thinking this and thinking that. A prayer that just releases you and releases everything within you unto the Lord. That's the kind of prayer we're going to pray today. When the people of God, when they pray and they sing unto the Lord. That's why Paul the Apostle said, I will pray in the spirit. I'll pray with understanding. And Paul the Apostle, remember an apostle, he said, I will sing in the spirit. And I will pray with, I will sing with understanding. And it is that kind that breaks every yoke. It's that kind that brings anointing down. And that anointing will come today in Jesus' name. I'm dividing the message to three points. Number one, the power of prayer and praise before deliverance. Not after deliverance. The power of prayer and praise. The power of prayer and praise before deliverance. Number two, the pursuit of passionate preaching. The pursuit of passionate, passionate preaching after deliverance. Number three, the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance. The peril of the people that remain in a day when God is pouring, pouring out a spirit, pouring out his power, pouring out the anointing and breaking yokes and destroying the works of the devil at such a time and in such a day, some people still remain bound. I pray it will not happen to you. I said it will not happen to you. I pray that this day of his power and this day of his authority and this day of open doors and this day of spontaneous miracle, instant miracle, I pray you receive your own and you'll come out of every bondage in Jesus' name. We're looking at number one now. Number one is the power of prayer and praise before deliverance. Anybody can sing after the miracle has happened. Anybody can jump after the miracle has happened. Anybody can shout. Anybody can clap after the miracle has happened. Before it happens. When your feet are still in the stalks. When the sickness is still there. When the imprisonment appears biting and terrible. And when evil men are waxing worse and worse. When the problems are increasing, when you can sing at that time, that's what brings miracle. Not after, but before. Let's look at that again. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, who having received such a charge, throws them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, the midnight of suffering, at midnight, the midnight of pressure. At midnight, the midnight of persecution. At midnight, when the forces of the magistrates were brought to bear upon them and they felt the pain, they felt the agony. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard. The prisoners were sleeping. And they didn't worry about when they hear to wake them up. That's a good thing to wake people up. Prayer and singing to wake people up. Shouting the praises of the Lord. Singing the praises of the Lord to wake people up. That's a good thing. 
And then it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. It was the singing was before that earthquake. The singing was before the opening of the door. The singing was before the deliverance. And then it says so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And sh immediately, and everyone's bands were loosed. I want you to look at First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, rather, singing, praying, praising the Lord before the time of the miracle in second chronicles chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 3 here we're told about jehoshaphat jehoshaphat had some challenges and a challenge that came upon him he even said what are we going to do this is perilous this is painful this is perplexing and we don't know what we're going to do it says in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 3 and joshua feared and he set himself to seek the lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all judah and judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the lord even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. You know, when there is trouble, that's the time there should be unity. That's the time there should be an ingathering of all the people united together. It's a privilege to bring all the problems before the Lord. What a privilege that we have to be able to say, oh Lord, what a special time. That this heartache here and this trouble here and this harassment of the devil here and these enemies that are walking and this failure here and this defeat over here were bringing it to the Lord with a united heart. That's why it says, and the whole of Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. And that's why we're here to ask help of the Lord and that help we're going to get in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, So our God... Will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. When you don't know what to do, you can pray, you can sing. When you don't know what to do, you can glorify the Lord and say you are the God of all wisdom and the God of all might and the God of all power and then praise the glory the majesty of the Lord when well, you don't know what to do singing will be a wonderful thing singing the praises of the Lord singing the promises of the Lord just taking out of the word of God and just singing look at the Psalms and sing and look at the Gospels and sing and look at your hymn book and sing just sing when you, when you can't move forward or you can't move backward and you are hedged in and it appears you are saying what am i going to do i've never found a problem like this in my life i've never encountered something like this in my life this is terrible and this is peculiar what a time to live and when you are confused like that i'll say what will i do where will i go who will bring the solution to me that is the time to do what paul and silas did and just to pray and to sing and when there's no helper around no prayer warrior around no supporter around nobody that understands you or understands your problem nobody willing to give a helping hand that will be the time to pray and to sing the praises of the Lord. They said in verse 12, O Lord our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon the Lord. I said our eyes are upon the Lord. Take your eyes away from the enemy and take your eyes away from the detractors and say, Lord, my eyes are upon you and I know you're going to solve my problem and the Lord will solve the problem in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19, verse 19. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohites stood up 
to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. They stood up. The problem was not solved yet. The difficulties were not removed yet. And all those large companies of mighty warriors against the people of God, they were not beating back yet. And yet these people, they rose up to shout and to sing the praise of the Lord. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and, and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. How many people are believing the Lord our God today? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. But you know, actions speak louder than words. If you believed the Lord, you'll not cry. If you believe the Lord, you'll not do anything to say, if God is getting late, I'm going to solve my problem. This way. If you believe the Lord, you're not going to run to the harbor. If you, believe, if you believe the Lord, you're not going to run to those who are using paths of darkness. If you believe the Lord, you're not going to run, run to those false prophets. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, prophets. If you believe the Lord, you're not going to go to those who are burning their candle and, you know, burning their incense. If you believe the Lord, you're not saying this is getting off hand i need to do something now if you believe the lord if you're going to have solution to your problem all the things that are contrary to god contrary to the way of righteousness all those things you abandon you reject you run away from and then it says and so shall ye be established you'll be established in jesus name and believe his prophets and believe his prophets. Two things. Number one. What's number one? Believe the Lord. Everybody tell me. What's number one? Tell me again. Tell me. Believe the Lord. What's number two? What's number two? What's number two? Believe his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. You, you know, there are some people that think that, I think I said it many, many years ago. If I were not the pastor in the church, it would be easy for me to call everybody and say, hey, come on, believe the pastor and believe the prophet. If I were not the pastor, it would be easy for me to say, hey, everything you hear from the pastor, take it in. If he just, even if he winks with the eye or shakes your hand or whatever he does, when he preaches the word, when the anointing comes upon him and he says, thus says the Lord, believe the prophet. But, well, I happen to be the pastor. I still need to preach the word of God and tell you that when you believe the prophet, you are going to prosper. I said you are going to prosper. Now, if we believe the prophet, you're not going to talk to the prophet like Pharaoh talked to Moses. He didn't believe the prophet. If you believe the prophet, you're not going to do what Potiphar did to Joseph. If you believe the prophet, you're not going to do what the Canaanites did to Joshua. If you believe the prophet, you're going to soak in the word, accept the word. Well, if you don't believe your, the prophet, the prophet will still prophesy. But you will miss the benefit of the prophecy. I pray you'll not miss it in Jesus' name. That's why the word of God says that you remember those that have the rule over you. Who preach the word unto you. They are the prophets of God. They are the servants of the Lord. And what they tell you is for your good. It's to prepare you for heaven. Believe the Lord your God. You'll be established in Jesus' name. And believe his prophets. And so shall ye prosper. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed. Who did he appoint? I said, who did he appoint? Singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever 
and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon and then the children of Moab and then of Mount Seir which were come against Judah and they were tell me the word smitten there was meeting because they sang and they praised the Lord before the deliverance. Before the deliverance. Before the deliverance. And then the deliverance came because with joy in their heart. With faith in their heart. They sang praises to the Lord and the victory came. Your victory has come. I said your victory has come. That he is when you believe the Lord your God. That he is when you believe his prophets. That he is when in the midst of the trouble. In the midnight of persecution and pain and pressure. When in that situation you sing unto the Lord. Forget the problem and sing unto the Lord. Good things will happen to you. And mighty things will happen to you in Jesus name. Now we are coming back to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, point number two. The pursuit of passionate preaching. The pursuit of passionate preaching after deliverance. You understand what has taken place in Acts chapter 16, verse 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 26. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open. How many doors were open? How many doors were open? And then it says, and everyone's bands were loosed. Verse 27. And the keeper of the prison awaking out of sleep. The keeper of the prison awaking out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open. He drew out a sword and he would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. You must uh, understand as you read your Bible how many things happen to many people. And there's a word here. A word you need to take to heart. Supposing. Supposing supposing and that supposition would have killed him that supposition would have sent him to a premature grave death that supposition could have landed him in hell and he could have been in hell forever because he supposed he thought he had not checked up he just woke up suddenly and supposing all the prisoners had fled because of the open doors, then he wanted to kill himself. Do you know that many things in life that happen negatively to you is based on supposition? Do you know that many negative actions you take in life against yourself to hinder your own progress, to cut short your own success? Do you know many things that happen to you in life? Even people that commit suicide. It's the supposition, supposition, supposition. Supposing all the prisoners were fled. And then he began to sing. If all the prisoners had gone, they will take me. And they will judge me as being careless. Or they're going to judge me as colluding with them. And then I made this to happen. And before they kill me, let me kill myself. I want you to examine your life today. What many things are you supposing about your life, about people, about things around you that you have not checked up? And it's a supposition that is killing many people today. I pray the Lord will deliver us from that in Jesus' name. You know, in relationship, husband and wife, supposition, supposition can kill that marriage. Between parents and children, supposition can kill the affection in that family between parents and children, supposition. Between a pastor and the members of the church, supposition. Supposing the pastor is planning this. And supposing the members are planning this, supposition. 
makes you to go ahead and kill some good projects of the church so opposition can bring death but then we're told in verse 28 but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here your supposition is wrong and many suppositions are like that they are wrong and sometimes when we're supposing we close our ears we don't even know when paul is talking we don't know when the messenger of life and light and hope when they are talking because our suppositions block our ears our suppositions close our eyes our suppositions blindfold us but then it says do yourself no harm we don't mean any harm all we're doing is singing all we're doing is praising the lord all we're doing is causing a miraculous earthquake to take place here as we praise the lord do yourself no harm we're all here then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before paul and silas and and then he says he brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved sirs what must i do to be saved sirs there's one thing i need from you you tell me if you could sing when you are in the prison you have something if heaven could respond to your singing at the midnight you have something i don't have i realize i now recollect the mess i know why you are here i remember that that damsel was following after you and he said these are the servants of the most high god who show unto us the way of salvation that's why they laid hands on you that's why you came to the prison that's why you are singing that's why your god the god of heaven has not performed this miracle for you i believe you are the servants of the most high god showing unto us the way of salvation sirs what must i do to be saved and then he told him and it says in verse 31 and they said believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house and the same thing we're saying today the purpose of the deliverance the reason for the deliverance and what the climax of the miracle that has taken place is for you to bring up the question in your mind in your heart and say sirs we've seen this miracle we're seeing this manifestation of God's power and we know you are the servants of the most high God and you know the way of salvation I want to be saved you'll be saved in Jesus name then we're told in verse we're told in verse 32 and they speak unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house and he took them the same hour of the night and he washed their stripes and was baptized and he and all his house straightway and when he had brought them into his house obviously he was born again obviously this was the philippian jailer this was the person that put them in the inner prison this was the person tormenting them before he washed their wounds he brought them into his own house he fellowshiped with them he believed in the lord with all his house and he said meet before them and rejoice believing in god with all his house we need to pursue passionate preaching fervent preaching serious preaching when we see the manifestation of the delivering miracle of the lord i'm going to show you something now point number three i don't know whether you've ever noticed this in this passage the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance you know all those prisoners that were there come back to verse 26 suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking and immediately all the doors were open 
All the doors were open. They were not sleeping, they were awake. Because it says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. They were awake. And they knew. They knew when they began to sing. They knew how long they sang. They knew when the earthquake took place. They saw all the doors open. And they also felt all their bands being loosed. But you know something? None of them asked the question, Sirs, what shall we do to be saved? None of them. They levered, but they remained in bondage. Their bands were loosed. They remained in bondage. Miracle came from heaven, opened all the doors. None of them attempted to come out. Deliverance came, but they remained in bondage. The tragedy of the people who are very near the power of God that's able to bring deliverance and open doors, and yet none of them went through those open doors. You know, sometimes it can happen to people, even people who say they're children of God, they are born again. Here we are, for example, in our church. I was praising the Lord and praying and just singing to the Lord. And God opens a door here, opens a door there, opens a door there. And we're so entrenched in what we're doing that we just abandon those open doors. And we just neglect those open doors. And we have to see if no door had opened. You know, sometimes it can happen to an overseer like that, a pastor like that, in a local government like that. And you know, the people you've been facing pressure and you've been facing persecution and you've been facing restriction. And they say you cannot go here, you cannot go there. Nobody wants to listen to you. All of a sudden, as the people of God, they turn around, they say, There is nothing to worry about, and there is nothing to panic about, and there is nothing to cry about. And we're just praising the Lord and singing unto the Lord. And the bad things that happen, we say, leave all that alone and leave the imprisonment alone and leave all those harassment of the enemy alone just sing unto the lord and the lord looks at a hand that was singing unto him and then he opens a door here opens a door there opens a door there and then we just keep on the routine seeing the traditional thing just do what we always did until those doors close again i pray your doors will not close again but the tragedy the tragedy the tragedy of the people whose bands were loosed. Freedom came. Liberty came. Authority came. And everybody knew that these people are messengers of the Lord of God in heaven. And yet, even with those open doors, none of them went through the open doors. You know, the Lord said, I set an a door before you which is open, and no man shall close it in Jesus' name. Open doors of evangelism. Open doors of preaching. Open doors of revival. Open doors where doors have been closed before. By your singing, by your praying, by your seeking the face of the Lord, a miracle will come from heaven. I said a miracle will come from heaven. And then you couldn't move when your legs were in the stalks. But now when the miracle comes from heaven, and then the doors are open and all the bands are loose. That's the time to get up and go through those open doors. I pray that God will not leave us the way we are. Closed minds and closed eyes and closed understanding. That even when the doors are open, you don't know how to get up, go through and then do exploits for the Lord. We're going to do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. So the first scene, although their bands were loosed, although all the doors were open, not one of them budged. Not one of them moved. Not one of them asked a question with a desire. What shall we do to be saved? The Lord is telling us that the reason why he performs miracles for us and the reason why he opens all those doors for us and the reason why he makes all the bands to be loose the reason is so that is so that C 
sinners will come to repentance believers will go through the open door and then will do what we have never done and see what we have never seen i'm looking at romans chapter 2 romans chapter 2 and we're looking at this from verse 4 romans chapter 2 verse 4 or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that his goodness the goodness of god leadeth thee to repentance all those people they didn't pray they just listened to paul and silas praying and singing they didn't ask for anything without even asking for a miracle the miracle came they didn't understand that the goodness of the lord was leading them to repentance and i pray that the miracle that you receive because you are going to receive miracle i said you are going to receive miracle and i pray that the miracles you receive the open doors that god grants you and grants us and the binds that are loose and broken i pray that those miraculous wonders in your life in my life in our lives together will lead us to repentance in jesus name look at verse 5 but after thy hardness those, those prisoners i think they were hard in their heart they said yes we see the miracle we're not going to do anything about that yes we see the open doors we're not going to do anything about that yes we see that all our bands are loose we're not going to do anything about that hardness of heart and religious people could be hard-hearted you know like pharisees they were religious people sadducees they were religious people sanhedrin they were religious people priests levites they were religious people the goodness of the lord that brought jesus unto them blind eyes open lame people rising up and walking and the maimed who have a part of their body all gone replaced again and great miraculous wonders signs and wonders taking place in their in their midst yet crucify him get rid of him i pray that will not happen to us in jesus name i thought to say good good day. Amen. amen but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of god now those were not the only people that saw miracle spectacular miracle miracle they never knew they must thought of before and yet remained in the impenitence and i read to you matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 4 here you'll find once again how god performed spectacular miracle and yet the people that saw that miracle and that miracle touched them they did nothing about that the lord is telling us about the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance in matthew chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 2 and behold there was a great a great what tell me out loud a great earthquake. you remember where we're coming from you remember where we're coming from paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto the lord and then suddenly there was a great earthquake and then the doors were open and then the bands were loose here we're told there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for the fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men the keepers did shake and became as dead men they fell to the ground that miracle kind of 
made them so weak they couldn't carry themselves again look at verse 11 now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed and revealed unto the chief priest all the things that were done and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers hush money shut up money yes we understand christ rose from the dead an angel came from heaven a mighty earthquake took place something splendid something wonderful that had never happened happened and what did they do about that they just silenced the soldiers none of them said lord what shall we do to be saved now we know you have risen from the dead now we know a miracle that never took place before has taken place what shall we do we want to be saved and all they said was in verse 13 and say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you so that's all they said so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until this day everybody knew that it was just to silence them but the point is they remained sinners even though they saw that jesus christ the savior who died three days ago he rose again that miracle of resurrection did not affect them i pray you will not be like that that after you have seen the great wonder of the lord and the great miracle of the lord that you'll not be the person to just remain in bondage after the deliverance has come we're coming back to acts of the apostles chapter 16 acts chapter 16 and here is what they did here is what brought the miracle your miracle is coming miracle of salvation did you hear that amen went down when i mentioned salvation <laughs> miracle of salvation miracle of conversion a miracle of total freedom from sin and all the consequences of sin in your life in jesus name acts chapter 16 i'm reading there from verse 25 and at midnight at the midnight of adversity at midnight at midnight of sickness at midnight at midnight of persecution at midnight the midnight of pain at midnight the midnight of suffering at midnight the midnight of the people of the world putting some yoke upon you at midnight the midnight of unexplainable inexplicable trial and trauma in the lives of the people paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners had them you know it's, it's not it's not just uh, it's not preaching alone they prayed and they sang praises in fact they were not even praying for those prisoners they were not praying for anybody they were just praying to the lord and just thanking god oh god we thank you for this whole year oh god we thank you for the sunshine and the rain oh god we thank you because you've given us opportunity oh god you've given us revelation oh god we thank you for this and thank you for that what a great god we're serving what a mighty god we're serving and you count your blessings and then count them one by one and see what the Lord has done. As they were doing that, then they just started singing, spontaneous singing. And when they started singing like that, here is what we're told. They sang praises to God and the prisoners heard them. And then it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. Foundations of prison. The foundation of the prison was shaken. I said it will shake. But you know, you know, they didn't have any kind of. We're going to sing and pray for five minutes. We're going to sing and pray for ten minutes. They're all singing and looking at their wristwatches and singing and looking at you know the wall clock. They just sang and they praised the Lord. If you're looking for miracle, the miracle is coming. I said the miracle is coming. But you know, 
if you, you either look at the miracle or you look at the time you cannot look at two things at the same time you cannot say well i'm looking at time i'm looking at time miracle come when you want to come i'm looking at time we're not looking at any time we're not looking at this what we're looking unto god i said we're looking unto god and as we look unto god and then we pray and we sing praises unto the lord the spectacular will happen i said the spectacular will happen and we're going to receive miracles from heaven in jesus name wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone's bands here loosed i said wouldn't it be wonderful i said wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone's bands one even if it takes one hour of praying and singing praises unto the lord even if it takes one whole day and forget every other thing what do you need what do you want just time go through this and go through this and keep to time but get nothing or if we just abandon all that and we say today a day of praising the lord a day of singing to the lord and then your bands are loosed your bands are loosed your bands are loosed and even if you are not a member of the choir an apostle sing today an overseer sing today a preacher sing today and then members of the church you sing spontaneously to the lord in your room in the prison in the hospital at the retreat anywhere you find yourself in the kitchen in the sick bay among the children among the youths among the adults those on the road and everywhere just praising the lord forget every other thing and abandon every other thing just praising the lord and singing unto the lord rise up now that's how they go God, the miracle and we're going to get the miracle i said we're going to get the miracle with all your heart all your soul all your mind forgetting every other thing abandoning every other thing oh lord we come to you today open your mouth and tell the lord eh, don't, don't ask for anything yet don't ask for anything yet don't say oh god i'm suffering oh god i'm having this oh god i'm just rejoice before the lord this is the day the lord has made and we're going to be glad and rejoice in it open your mouth and pray unto the lord glorify the lord glorify the lord glorify the lord forget your condition forget your situation forget your supposition don't talk about the suffering don't talk about the sickness don't talk about the oppression don't talk about the attack don't talk about the affliction don't talk about the imprisonment don't complain don't worry about anything just to pray just to pray just to pray and to seek praises unto the lord isn't the lord good he saved us isn't the lord good he healed us isn't the lord good he blessed us isn't the lord good he's on great wonderful mighty things for us he sent the lord jesus christ a savior a lord Look unto the Lord, not a time. Look unto the Lord. Don't be so self conscious, time conscious, worshiping time instead of worshiping God, worshiping self instead of worshiping God. Forget about yourself. No complaint. No more mourning. No grumbling. No supposition. Let the apostles pray and sing praises unto the Lord. Let the overseers, the pastors, the preachers, the evangelists pray and sing praises 
unto the Lord. Let the prisoners, the oppressed, the persecuted, the, the afflicted, pray and sing praises unto the Lord and see yokes broken and see binds loosed and see the prison doors open time to worship the Lord not worship time time to worship the Lord not worship sale time to worship the Lord not worship program not worship tradition release yourself to pray and to sing unto the Lord believe the Lord your God and believe this prophet believe the Lord your God and believe his prophets and so shall ye prosper forget yourself forget yourself worship the Lord worship the Lord from the depths of your heart no complaint no murmuring no supposition just worship just worship with a heart yielded to God remember the goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance the goodness of the Lord the miracles of the Lord the deliverance of the Lord leads us to repentance forget the past there's a new day forget the past there's a new day a new day to praise his name a new day to glorify his name a new day to act different to believe the word and to do what those in bible days what they did and then as you do what those in bible days did that they forgot their troubles they forgot their trials they forgot the oppression they forgot the persecution they forgot the imprisonment and they forgot all the suppositions of men and they forgot all the traditions of men it wasn't a tradition for people to sing in the prison that wasn't their culture that wasn't their tradition they broke the tradition they released themselves into praying and praising the Lord singing unto the Lord and that one time singing at midnight that one time singing in the prison that one time singing empowered them and brought miracles they couldn't have got in any other way let the praises flow let the singing rise let the joy of the Lord rise again the hearts of the people from the hearts of the people sing unto the Lord pray unto the Lord 
praise the name of the Lord before the deliverance before the miracle before the open doors sing unto the Lord in Jesus name we pray you know I wonder that uh, Paul and Silas it wasn't easy to stop them and it's so easy to stop you a crowd and uh, as soon as I just you know, pray then everything said wow were you praising the Lord? I said, were you praising the Lord? From the depths of your heart. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, hallelujah. Amen, everybody. Amen, praise him, praise him, hallelujah. Amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Amen. Your mountains are removed. Your sicknesses are healed. Your oppressions are taken away. Barrenness is gone. All the calamities have come to an end. Believe the Lord your God, and so will you be established or established. Yeah. Believe his prophet, and so will you prosper. Yeah. 
you'll prosper in Jesus name Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Already, Lord, we know that our problems are solved. Our mountains are removed. Our sicknesses are healed. Our oppressions are taken away. All the yokes are broken. All the causes are taken away. The rest of this day, the rest of this week, the rest of this year, only your praises will be in our mouth. The rest of our lives, no complaint, no grumbling, no murmuring. In the night, in the day, in the rain, in the sunshine, under persecution and under pain. When we understand what's happening, when we don't understand what's happening, when enemies are rushing into their destruction, and when friends are near, anytime, every time. Only your praises will be in our mouth in Jesus' name. I release the anointing that breaks the yoke on everyone. I release the power for the hour of everyone's situation in Jesus' name. Set the people free. We we'll receive the freedom. We we'll receive the deliverance. We we'll receive the healing. We receive the miracle. It is done. It is done. It is done. We thank you because we know everything is accomplished already. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord always. With all my heart, praising the Lord always, praising the Lord always, praising the Lord. Oh, is all my heart praising the Lord with all my heart? Oh, praising the Lord always, praising the Lord always. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Praising the Lord with all my heart. Always. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Lord is good, is good to me. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Hallelujah, my Lord is good. Is good to me. Amen. Put your hands together and praise the Lord more more clap the mountains away clap the sorrow away clap the imprisonment away and clap all the curses away praise praise the Lord